Hello and welcome to another episode of Around the House. I'm your host, Steve O'Brien. And what we do on our show is we talk about home improvement, home repair, home maintenance, anything to do with Around the House. And today's show, uh, we haven't done a show on this yet, so I, I thought it might be an interesting show for, for the viewers. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're taking two existing openings. And I've already uh, set a door in this opening. Uh, we took a solid a solid door out and we're putting in a door with some uh, glass uh, lights of glass and we're going to do it to the one behind me as well uh, but I just thought you should see what we're doing here and what we're going to show you in today's show is we're going to show you how to chisel in the, 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 the hinges or what we call them in the trade is the butts B-U-T-T-S butts we chisel them in and we line them up with the existing uh, butts that are already in the frame because this is a pre-existing frame and we're going to show you also, we're going to cut in, we're going to drill in our handsets uh, and show you how to locate the handset to drill it and how to, how to lay that out. So we'll show you that uh, more towards the end of the show. And what I want to also uh, talk about in this show is we're going to, you'll see a little kitchenette area behind me here. And what we're going to do, this is going to be an office space. And, we, and, and the people are going to come in. This is going to be the lobby. They don't want to see this kitchen area. So what we're going to do here, we're going to lay this out. We're going to frame it out for a four-foot wide bifold door. And they can close the door, and the kitchen will be hidden behind the door. So we'll also show you how we lay out for that uh, bifold door, how we put the bifold door together. So it ought to be an interesting show. We've got a lot to cover. Right, here we are we're inside the door opening as you can see from this angle we have the existing hinges that were on with the old door and what we're going to do in this uh, segment is we're going to change out these hinges and let me explain why we bought these square edge hinges and we're going to replace these radius edge hinges because we have to chisel these out uh, on the new door in it's really hard to get a, a nice radius corner doing it by hand. So the only reason we're doing this changeover is because it's just easier to chisel a square versus a radius. And if you had a router and you had to set up, it'd be fine, but we don't. So here we go. First thing we're going to do, we'll take the old hinge out. I'm just going to use the old screws for now to put the, and watch, sometimes they stick from being painted. Be careful, because you can, you can actually split the frame if they're painted in really good. So sometimes you can cut the paint line, very carefully cut the paint line, and that should help. Okay, it's going to take a little more persuasion. There we go. So, now what we do next is we're going to take our square hinge. Now these three holes should line up exactly with, with these three holes. And that's what, just what we want to do. As you can see, the hinge is not sitting down flat because we've got the radius corners. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just line it up. And I'll show you as we go. So, when you put your first screw in, and your second, don't tighten them all the way. Get all your screws to line up. Before you tighten it, make sure the screws are all pretty much lined up. Then you snug them up. No need to really tighten them too tight. Okay, that looks good. Now, you take a good sharp razor knife, and you want to just kind of follow the edge of this, the butt or the hinge, whatever you prefer to call it. I call it a butt. You can call it a hinge. Um, and then you just trace the part that's sticking out because it's laying on top of the radius corner, if you remember. So you just kind of trace it with your knife. I found that if you use a pencil. 
the pencil thickness of the lead, you always end up with a big gap. So if you use a nice sharp razor knife, it's a pretty clean cut. You get a nice tight fit. So you just kind of very lightly just cut into that just to mark it. Okay, now we take the hinge off. Okay, of course it falls. And this is where the chisel comes in. Get a nice chopped chisel. And very gently just follow your lines. And then just kind of clean that out just a little at a time. Don't try to take it all out at once because you got to cut it gradual. Now you cut in a little bit more. And each time you just cut a little more. And then you work it out. Good. We'll do the bottom. Okay. Okay, so that, that's all that takes. It doesn't take a lot. So now we have a square, a square uh, mortise to receive our square hinge. So why don't we, uh, we'll start, we'll put our hinge in. All right. And that should snug right in there good. When you put these hinges in, always remember, there's a bottom and a top to these, and the way you tell is that the top, there's a pin that connects the two pivots, okay? You'll notice the bottom is the pin that you drive up. You can drive that up with a nail set, but the round part, the smooth part, always goes facing upward. Just remember that and you'll be okay, okay? So now we put the hinge in place, and we can start putting this in permanently. And again, it's the same, same setup as before. You just snug your screws, whoop, snug them up before you tighten them, and you tighten them up all the way after they're all in. So now we'll put the middle one in. And don't try to tighten these too much, just till you feel them tight. If you try to put a lot of tight, you're either gonna strip out the screw head or you're gonna strip out, you're gonna spin it out in the wood. So just snug it tight. That's it. That's it. That's it. You don't need to put eight million pounds of pressure on that to tighten it. So there you go. And then we're gonna do that on the other two. And then we're gonna proceed to put the door in place and we'll mark the door for the op opposing, uh, opposing side and we'll hang the door.
dry fitted the door into place so that we can mark our, our hinges. And you, you shim the door up with some shims, or you can use a flat bar, whatever works for you. I use wooden shims. And you make sure your spacing is pretty good all the way around the door, as you can see. The spacing is really good with this door. I'm very happy with it where it is. So now, we have to mark for our hinges so we can attach them to the door. And that's our next step, what we're going to show you now. Again, I take a, I take a uh, razor knife, and I very, just very simple, you just mark the top, put the knife blade right on top of the hinge, make a little mark on the corner of the door, do the same here, and same up here, same here, and you do it on all the hinges, just a little mark, and you'll see it. Do it down the bottom, and we're ready to... Now, in this case, let me explain. This is a 36-inch door. Uh, this is a 36-inch slab. They call it a slab. And we're fitting it to an existing frame. We took a door out. Now, this old door that we took out was a little bit bigger than 36. It's like 36 and a quarter. So this door came through at exactly 36, maybe, maybe an eighth at the most. So if I was to chisel these butts or hinges into the door, this gap on the striker side would be even bigger than it is now. So I'm just going to overlay the butts onto the frame, uh, onto the door, and I'm not going to mortise them into the door. You very seldom will see that, and it, even if you do, it's, it's, you know, it doesn't look that bad. It's, but in this case, we have to do it because... If we cut the hinges into the door, it's going to bring this gap even further back. So we'll have a bigger gap. So um, we don't have any, any other choice other than uh, changing things around and getting into some major work. So that's what we're going to do with that. So in our next shot, we're going to show you um, how we put the hinges on the door, fasten them to the door, and then we'll actually hang the door. Well, you can see we completed our, our door project. We, we've hung the doors, uh, and at some point we'll put our handsets in the doors. Now, you're probably saying, what the heck is up with this glass? But this is a plastic they put over the glass, so when they paint the, the door, it doesn't get on the glass. And uh, I'm going to leave that like that until the finished coat of paint is on. And then you take a razor, a razor blade, and you cut that plastic out, and you don't have to worry about paint getting on the glass. So that's why it's all obscure like that. Uh, in our next uh, segment, when we come back, we're going to be actually framing out an opening. This opening, like we explained in the beginning of the show, we're going to frame this out, and we're going to get it ready for a set of four-foot bifold doors, and that'll be in our next segment. So we hope you can stay with us for that. <laughs> Welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to show you how we lay out the framing for this bifold door that we told you earlier we were going to install. Uh, the bifold door is behind me, and um, for you people that don't do this on a regular basis, I would suggest getting the door 
uh, in the area where you're going to be doing the actual work and then take the door out of the carton and the main thing you want to look for is just the top track which I have right here in my hand and I'll show you this is the side the door pivots on and this is the back side as you can see I've located the center point and now what I'm going to show you is what to do with that you take the track and after you've cut your studs this is the header piece which will go against the ceiling which is the top of my door and the bottom piece really is irrelevant at this point but you lay them out together at the same time as you can see I found the center point here and what I'm going to do to, to show you I line the center point up like that so that the door is centered in our framing opening as you can see you see my marks there's two marks here for my studs and I'm, I'm using double studs because only because it's not a bearing wall so we don't have to put a header up here but it's just a matter of it gives us more nailing when we put our trim around the door as you'll see so I left a gap you see the gap here that what that gap is and there's a gap on this side and what that gap is is that allows for our, our pine or poplar trim that we're going to trim this opening with so you have to account for that you have to account for the three-quarter inch trim that's going to go around these studs after we frame it so that's how you lay it out and the height uh, the height is uh, I go 80 inches which is this is a 79 inch door I go an inch higher and that'll also allow for the um, the three-quarter inch trim so we'll put this together and I'll show you after we get it together how it all looks when we put it in place
All right, there you have it. Um, it's all fastened together. And again, some people prefer to use nails. You can nail it. Uh, I like to use screws because it just seems to hold better when you're moving this around. They don't loosen up. Um, again, it's a preference. I, if I was doing a lot of these, uh, I'd probably use a nail gun, but it's only one. And uh, just a little bit easier for me to use a, a, a three-inch screw. Uh, so now it's all ready. What we're going to do now is we this is the bottom and I'm gonna cut the bottom this piece comes out because we have a tile floor and I don't want to cut it in place because I might scratch the tile so I'm gonna cut this out before we install a petition <laughs> this concludes part one of our two-part series uh, you saw us rebutting two new doors which we put into an existing opening, two existing openings where there were solid doors we replaced with glass doors and we kept the existing frame. So we had to rebut, we rebutted the doors to match the existing frame and we started our bifold project. I want to thank all our viewers, all our local South Shore communities for viewing. Uh, we really appreciate it and we do appreciate the feedback and feel free to Give us your comments, uh, anything you want us to add to the show maybe that you might like. Finishdimensions at yahoo.com is the email address. And you can visit my website, www.finishdimensions.com, anytime. And my, my name is Steve O'Brien. I'm the host of this show. The name of the show is Around the House. I want to thank everyone for viewing, and see you on the next show. <laughs>